Hello, investors and traders, and welcome to the Weekly Market Report. I'm A.J. Monty, Chief Technical Analyst with Sticky Trades, and we are coming into the final minutes of today's trading day. Looking at DIA, you can see that we do have this red candle right there that's known as a bearish harami. Now, if you had a chance to watch the midweek report, I drew that horizontal line as the target for a gap fill. And if you are following my gap fill rules, you'll know that 80% of the time gaps fill. And then once they fill, there's now an 80% chance that we will reverse from that point. So coming into next week, I do believe we're coming right back down. And I think we will breach that 20 period moving average. So next week, 383.58 is my downside target. Remember, Monday, the markets are closed for President's Day. So this could be an interesting Tuesday morning, depending on what happens over the weekend with geopolitical news, if that should, in fact, affect the market. So it's DIA. If we look at IWM, pretty much the same story. We had that gap fill up here. We hit my upside targets from last week's report on Friday. So all those targets are hit. If I zoom in here, what do you have? That's a shooting star and a bearish Harami to boot, all rolled up in one. So I think we're coming right back down to fill this gap, possibly Tuesday or Wednesday, 199.33. Look down below, the CCI is just a hair away from crossing with a sell signal down there. So again, downside target, for next week, 199.33 on IWM. If we look at QQQ, we have this interesting pattern here. Again, gap has filled on the upside to the T, just like what I suggested on Wednesday. And I did say that I would erase that on Friday, so I'm taking that off. Bearish engulfing is not only engulfing yesterday's green candle, but also what we saw on Wednesday. So that's even more significant and as I back out, I'm going to show you something here on the weekly chart. This is fan line number four. Go back a couple of months and you'll know how I work these fan lines. This is fan line number four. This is fan line five. We're now at fan line number six. Once fan line six breaks, there's now a 90% chance that we will move down to fan line five. That's how fan lines work. When you have three or more fan lines are considered an overbought condition. And so now the markets have moved in a very dramatic way to the upside, more than a 45 degree angle there. And again, if you zoom in here, you can see that we do have not a bearish engulfing, but that is a bearish Harami. So I think on Tuesday, possibly Wednesday, I think we're coming right back down. So I'm keeping this downside target right here. Let me go to the daily chart so you can get a better eyeball on that. I'm keeping this downside target of 409.53. I know that's an extreme move, but I think that's where we're headed. Look down below at the oscillators. Look at the CCI making an about face here, pivoting lower and heading towards that zero line, which is the momentum line. Once we cross below that, and it's been a while since we've crossed below that momentum line. Look what happened last time we saw that cross. Markets dropped pretty significantly here. And I think we're long overdue for that cross on the CCI to the downside. So I would not be surprised to see that one stretch and build some downside momentum. Again, looking at the daily chart on that, we have that bearish engulfing. Again, that's engulfing two previous green candles right there. Now let's look at SPY. Same condition, actually. We had the gap on the upside fill. You can see that right here. Now we have a bearish Harami again. I'm going right back down to this moving average for next week. We'll have to see whether or not that moving average holds. That's why I'm dropping it right there. 493.99 for SPY. Now, let's look at the VIX. We did not come back to fill that gap. This is going to be very interesting because this gap fill is going to act as a support level for the VIX. We are hovering up, but look at that, a bullish engulfing for the VIX. Now remember, for the most part, the VIX is inversely related to the S&P. If the VIX starts to rally, 
we have to keep this gap down here in mind. So in other words, for you bears out there, if you decide to take a short position and we start to get a run to the downside, that gap down below will be more bullish as a magnet, a price magnet for the S&P to draw the S&P up. Remember, they're inversely related. So in other words, if the VIX starts rallying up in this area right here, it could very well pull right back down to fill the gap. So if the VIX pulls back, that's going to be short-term bullish for the S&P. And that's just a, a caution flag for the bears out there that are looking to take new positions. Now we're coming into the close right now. And what do we have? Two seconds. There we go. The market is officially closed. We're right at four o'clock as I'm doing this recording. And I just want to do a quick shout out to one of our viewers. That's John Chow, 5958, asking me if I could look at the natural gas, UNG. And I rarely do this, but I'm doing my very best to help our subscribers and our followers. You could see that natural gas is, this is United States natural gas, is starting to form a pivot down here. It's not quite a pivot, but you have a half signal here. And so I think that natural gas is extremely oversold. We have a buy signal forming right here on the CCI, and the stochastic is about to cross. So if I were to put a target on, on this one, it's going to be a lot higher, but I'm not going to go all the way up to that moving average. John, I'm just doing this one for you. I'm going to go up to this gap fill area up here. So I think that one has potential to get to 1672. If you're trading that, please make sure you are using good risk management technique. Now, for those of you who are following my SLV trades, I put a post out on X and this one went out this morning where I sold 5% of my position. I sold that this morning on the opening at 2107 and guess what happened silver went up and i'm okay with that because if you looked at my notes on that x post i have another gap fill resistance up here at 2165 so if we get a drop in volume on tuesday anywhere near that level of 2165 guess what i'm going to do i'm going to sell another five percent of my position so you heard it here first I generally let people know way ahead of time what my intentions are so that you are prepared if, in fact, you are mirroring or ghosting any of these trades. Right now, I think that silver has the potential to run, and that looks pretty good for those who are already long. Now, the idea that I have here for the posts that I put out on X is to show people how, to, how I parlay the position. Maybe one of these days I'll tell you what I'm doing with the profits that I make from these trades, but not right now. I have a plan, a long-term plan to build assets, not just in silver, but also in the real estate market. So in other words, I take profits and I put that right into real estate as more or less a portfolio type of a strategy. Now, one last thing, and then I'm going to get to the geopolitical news, is if you look at BTC, remember, I said that my longer-term target is 60,000 for Bitcoin right here. We're on a roll. And if you look at that weekly chart, looks like we got an increase in volume. However, when you snap back to the daily chart, it's getting a little tired right here. Yesterday, we had a shooting star. Today, we have a shooting star. I'm going to tell you, I, again, I don't normally do this, but I'm going to put a little bit of a, a pullback here for Bitcoin. I think that one could slide back to 50,461 to the penny right there. And then you might see a little bit of a pivot. So for those of you who are long Bitcoin, I would say good idea is to protect any profits, use trailing stops and look down below. You're very close to a sell signal here on the CCI with already uh, sell signals showing on the stochastic. Now, if you're following along at Sticky Trades, you'll know that I use a seven point trading checklist. Pretty simple, actually. Our members have access to this. I look at the type of candle. I look at the volume. I look at how that compares to the moving averages. Of course, I look at gaps. There's an 80-20 rule. I look at the stochastic and the CCI, just like I did in the analysis here today. And so it makes it a lot easier to follow a trading checklist than to trade on your emotions or your instincts, which generally don't work. If you have a trading checklist, you're using the technical signals 
to make the decision and it pulls all the emotions out of it. Now, the big news today was not just the PPI, but housing starts. And if you look at this, this is pretty dramatic. We have housing starts and the, and the privately owned housing sector is plummeting right now to levels that we haven't seen since pre-pandemic 2020 lows right here. So this is a dramatic downturn in housing. Keep an eye on that because you could have a domino effect that will affect other markets, not just in residential, but it could affect the commercial real estate as well. This is something that came out of Moody's Analytics. Look at the default cycle. It's officially started and we're approaching 6%. What does that mean? Well, you generally look back and you see the upticks in defaults generally occur around recessions. Now, Europe has already announced they are in a deep recession that is most likely the worst in 40 years. And we are doing our very best to avoid that, oh, very nasty R word, right, that no one wants to talk about. That's actually a good thing for our economy. It helps reset prices as consumers go on strike. And what happens, generally prices drop after that. But we're avoiding that because why? We're in election year and there is an, an incumbent around that wants to have a recession occur during their watch. That's not good for their political campaigns in the slightest. So I want to give a shout out to Game of Trades. If you are on X, this is a good group to follow. They put out really good research. I use them quite often, as you may have seen already. And this is one of the ones that came out. Insider selling is on the rise. Isn't that interesting? The insider selling began earlier this month. And you could see that that's quite a dramatic spike. So a lot of times you want to follow the money, follow the insights, what's going on. This is a flag to say the least. Now, if you look at the money supply, here we go. Money supply is literally collapsing to levels we haven't seen since the Great Depression. What does that do? It definitely cuts down on the velocity of money. Go look that up. What is the velocity of money? It's the number of times a dollar changes hands and the frequency of that dollar exchanging within the economy. You want a good strong turnover or a higher velocity of money, but when the money supply drops, that also drops. Money does not circulate. That affects tax revenues, it affects commerce, it affects profits in companies. So keep an eye on that. This is very interesting. I do this quite often. This is more or less an overlay. This came out from Bloomberg. And I got to tell you, this is an impressive correlation. It's a 0.94 correlation showing the S&P where it is right now as it compared to the crash of 29, which is that red line. See, this is what happened in 1929. Where are we, folks? We're almost perfectly matched with that same exact pattern. And if you think that's interesting, look what happens when you start overlaying Cisco and NVIDIA. This is what happened to Cisco in 2000 in that crash. And where is NVIDIA? Well, if you look at some of the other stocks like we've seen today in SMCI, check this out. It's gone vertical. The stock is up 1,000% since May. Pretty insane. And look what's happening right here. Big, bad, bearish engulfing candle that's engulfing the two previous days in a pretty dramatic way. This stock is down almost 20% in one day. And look at that volume increasing. So this could have an effect on some of the mega cap stocks and also some of the AI stocks that we have out there like NVIDIA and some of the other institutional holdings. Just throwing that out because this is the beginning of what we normally see in bubbles, right? Right before the bubbles pop, you get these big blow off tops and that's pretty much what we're seeing right now across the board. Now, this is, again, I talk about this so often, but it's worth repeating. This is the longest period of time that the yield curve has remained inverted. We're well over a year now, and we have not seen the label of the recession. I do believe we're already in a recession. I believe the bond market is going to make sure that that is defined as such. But whether or not we're going to get any of the economists out there actually labeling it, we'll have to see. They're doing their best to avoid that conversation for sure. Remember, we're coming up on a three-day weekend right here. The bombing in Yemen persists. 
And you have to understand, I've said this before, we do have sleeper cells here in the U.S. The FBI has already identified the threats. Whether or not these sleeper cells are going to wake up and launch attacks are out of my range for forecasting. I'll stick with forecasting the market, but as far as military action, I'll leave that to others. But this is definitely a threat. And if you look at what's happening with the Houthi forces, the rebels out there, they are talking about possibly targeting key underwater internet cables. Now, if they are successful, you have to understand, read down into this article here, that carries 17% of the global internet traffic if they're successful. Do I believe they're going to pull it off? No, I do not. But the mere threat of it is something that should be of concern because if there is that slim chance that they team up with Iran and actually pull this one off, that could be the catalyst that leads us to a market much lower. Because remember what I said many times before, not if, but when the market does ultimately collapse, it's going to be a shocking event. Now, going back to the cues, I want to mention one other thing here with these fan lines. If you go back and look at the monthly chart right here, you could see how extreme this angle is. This is, by definition, a bubble. We have negative divergences down here. And so with that, I really hope that you're all managing risk. Please make sure you go to StickyTrades.com and plug in. We got a 15-day trial for everyone. By the way, we don't take credit cards during that period of time. You try it out, you like it, you come on board. If not, you walk away, no obligation whatsoever. We do not pressure anyone on our sales team. We make this a very comfortable experience. We want to build relationships with our audience. Our members are happy, we're excited, and I want to thank you so much, folks. Please remember to follow, like, subscribe, comment. We're approaching 10,000 people on our YouTube channel here, and that's all thanks to you. And that's since July, believe it or not. We're really happy about that. Have a great long weekend, folks. So long.